This is Sarnia Lampton Daily for Friday, June 19th. Good evening, I'm Terry Doyle. The longest COVID-19 outbreak in Sarnia Lampton has been declared over. The outbreak at Vision Nursing Home is now over as no new cases have been diagnosed in the past 14 days. 26 residents and 28 staff tested positive since the outbreak began on April 23rd. 10 residents who tested positive for COVID-19 passed away. Vision and Blue Water Health worked together to backfill staff positions and move the COVID-19 positive residents into hospital to allow the facility to be stabilized. Sarnia Lampton is now in stage two of reopening. That went into effect this morning. That means restaurant patios can open. Hair salons are now able to open up as well. Indoor malls are back open, including Lampton Mall, among various other things. Physical distancing rules must still be followed. It is Friday, and as we do on Fridays throughout Sarnia Lampton Daily, we check in at the Home Office in Petrolia with Sarnia Lampton MPP Bob Bailey. Good evening, Bob. How are you? Uh, great evening uh, to you, uh, Terry, and to your viewers. It uh, was a great day, a great week, actually, weather-wise, uh, here in uh, Ontario, and especially in Petrolia. But I, I spent most of the week in Toronto at Queen's Park. Now, I know today with uh, phase two officially in place, uh, I'm sure you've seen people uh, or heard stories of people out and about getting in their haircuts and uh, the patios being open as well. The weather's uh, worked out not too badly for it as well. And I have a feeling you uh, maybe did a little drive around today to check out uh, some of the patios. Yeah, earlier today, I made a point of, uh, you know, the patios, but also hairdressers, uh, different uh, businesses that were able to open uh, starting uh, today and on through the next week. So I wanted to make a point of getting around the county and, and seeing a number of people. And uh, uh, yeah, they were very happy to get to this stage. And, uh, you know, they've had pent up demand, I guess you would say. They, a number of the restaurants, of course, did their takeout, uh, you know, for the last few weeks, but they're certainly uh, prepared to move to this. We had urged a number of them for the last couple of weeks to be ready for you know when t today came and to be uh, to take advantage of it and i'm sure a lot of them did and the weather certainly has helped uh certainly the province of course made that announcement on monday that uh, sarnia lampton and some other areas could go to uh, stage two and from what you talked to with the premier and the cabinet it's just a case where looking at the numbers and uh you know seeing the numbers that stabilized even one more week put sarnia lampton in good's favor yeah and uh you know it's uh you know, there's still parts of the province, uh, the Toronto area, G the GTA, and uh, of course, Windsor Essex. Uh, still uh, outbreaks there. The numbers are very high. The, I uh, read a letter from the mayor of uh, Windsor. He's, you know, he understands why they're still in uh, phase one and and supports that as you know as much as he'd like to get to phase two. But he knows what the numbers are because we've said that all along that it's going to be scientific and numbers based as far as health. Uh, it's not political, it's all about the numbers. And uh, so uh, I was quite happy to be able to, uh, I guess I went on a call last, uh, this week earlier, Monday, I guess it was this week, Monty McNaughton and I, where we talked to the, the county mayors, the mayor of the city and Bev Hands, et cetera, Point Edward, and talked about uh, being prepared for an announcement later that day, I guess at one o'clock, that Sergeant Lampton would in fact be moving to phase two. So of course now we're in phase two. I'm hearing from people, some people saying, okay, when's phase three? Well, I said, I, I want to see us at phase two and uh, stable. And and then, uh, and I know there's people that want to get to phase three, but we got to just, you know, be careful. And uh, slow and steady wins the race, as the old saying goes. Well, and I guess two people are thinking maybe phase three is, that's right, blow the doors open, everything's back to normal. No, not quite. Yeah. And I no. guess that's the thing. That's I, I mean, phase three is still going to be physical distancing and things like that. Yeah. It's not going to, it's, I don't think things are ever going to be quite the same. And all you need to look at is our southern neighbors. There are states down there that went kind of full bore at this a few weeks ago. And now they're having, uh, you know, the numbers have increased there. There's people uh, uh, coming down with COVID 19 again. And so uh, I think that's the big fear here. For us in Ontario, we're sandwiched between New York on the one on the one side and Michigan to our west, both with far more number of cases uh, than we ever had here in Ontario, and of course Quebec, uh, uh, the other side of us, uh, e directly east of us. So that's a concern here that uh, you know we just have to make sure that we do everything we can do. We don't want to ever have to go back into this, uh, you know, try and lock 
the province down again, I, I don't think the people would be very accepting of that. So we have to do everything we can do to, you know, keep the borders closed for now. I think it's into at least June 30th uh, for the border closed down. July 21st would be the latest for the border right now. It's been pushed back yeah. to July 21st. I guess that's the thing. You can't yeah. you can't keep the border closed forever. Do you find that it's no. maybe, I know it's a federal thing, but it might be okay more, find out ways to open it, but with a lot more screening, for example? Yeah, I think that's something that they're going to have to look at going forward because eventually, you know, uh, I mean, there are a number of people I know that rely on tourism and business from the uh, tourists, uh, which would be the states, the American states, and uh, uh, eventually, you know, to get them back to some semblance of order, some semblance of normalcy, we will have to open that, those borders at some time. But I think we're going to have to make sure we have some type of better screening in, in effect. And, uh, of course, they're still working on that vaccine, uh, but I don't think that's going to be happening anytime soon. Uh, you were said you were in Toronto for a couple of days, and I guess that's the thing. Well, COVID is center stage. There's still other business being taken care of. We also passed one. Of, that's why I was late the other night getting home. Uh, uh, I guess that was Wednesday, uh, Wednesday night. Yeah, I didn't get home till midnight, but we passed the uh, <coughs> Commercial Eviction <coughs> Act, and that's to uh, goes back to it's retroactive to May first, <coughs> so landlords can evict a small business owners that are having difficulty paying the rent. So it's a three month uh, from May to July, May, June, July, uh, to uh, protect those uh, owners. And if you qualify for the federal, it's a joint program between the province and the feds and uh, to give the landlords and the tenants some uh, breathing room so they can get back up and start making some income to pay the rent. So that was very important. We heard from a number of small business people that they, you know, they were being threatened with eviction. So the premier uh, made a, a commitment that uh, we're going to put a stop to that. And so we uh, sat late that night to get that bill through. It's up for the weekend in uh, lovely Petrolia. Well, I'm going to keep traveling around and see some of these small business people and talk to them. And, and uh, I, I'm back in Toronto again next week uh, for uh, another session. We'll have more business to do. We're going to sit right through to July. And uh, somewhere around the, near the end of July, we'll rise. And then we'll hopefully have all the business done because there's a lot of stuff that needs to be addressed uh, because of this COVID-19. Uh, and, uh, you know, we have to keep the problems moving. We need to be in an economic recovery, everything in place for an economic recovery. We're going to have a, a number of inquiries, uh, of course, uh, to do with long-term care. That's something that I'm looking forward to, to having a, a voice in that. And, uh, you know, we have some private operators here in uh, Sarnia Lampton that I think, uh, you know, not to name any of them, but they did very good. And uh, they had, uh, you know, knock on wood, no outbreaks. And, but they were, and I'd like to use what they did uh, as uh, we go forward how do we protect uh, our long-term care residents and uh, when in the uh, in the event that we had something like this again and maybe use some of the examples that were used here locally a, i know we had outbreaks as well but uh, there were a number of private homes as well as public uh, the nonprofit homes that uh, did do very well and protected their residents bob for the weekend make sure you keep the hat handy and lots of sunscreen yeah, I just wanted to say wish all the fathers out there uh, this Father's Day weekend. So happy Father's Day to you, uh, Terry, and to all the other fathers that are watching there and uh, and uh, get around to golf and oh, free fishing this weekend too. No, you don't need a fishing license uh, for this weekend. Uh, uh, province doesn't always step up, but they did there. There's uh, So free fishing, any of you fishermen. Enjoy, Bob. We'll talk soon. All right. Thanks, Terry, and uh, good night to your viewers. There's Sarnia Lampton MPP Bob Bailey. Stay tuned. You're watching Sarnia Lampton Daily on your TV. Welcome back to Sarnia Lampton Daily. This is episode number 63 of our show. It's not a round number, but when this pandemic began, we originally planned for 20 shows over the course of four weeks. This is the end of week number 13. Over that time, we have spoken to many people across Sarnia Lampton. We have brought you community updates and heard people's stories of challenges and overcoming adversity. Here now is a summary of 13 weeks of Sarnia Lampton Daily. It's very hard to grasp what's happened. If we were talking a week ago, Terry, you know, life was reasonably normal. Uh, we are still providing Meals on Wheels all across the county, both frozen and hot. So that is, of course, very important right now. We have um, certain uh, 
protocols to to have, for example, masks and gowns and gloves, etc. Uh, they're still patients. We have to uh, to help them. Go home. Don't go to the grocery store, and stay home. And so we went from concept stage to literally an online forum in less than four hours, which I think is a great testament of how fast the United Way staff and board volunteers can work together. Uh, take care of your mental health just like you would your physical health and don't be afraid to reach out because we're here. People are understandably uh, afraid and we're hearing heartbreaking every day of people that are going to lose their businesses. Just really think that even though we're all locked in our homes, um, there is still stuff going on out there in the world that needs blood every day. We had a hard date of, you know, a few months ago of July 1st when everybody had to replace uh, those OHIP cars. Now, I think that's probably up in the air now. Things like mental health support, there's a lot of very anxious people out there right now. So pointing people in the direction. And so what we're learning is that there's at least one group of people who's connected to a trip that happened uh, to Europe, a group a group trip to Europe. If people are able to give, and every single gift, every single denomination does make a difference, we are asking them to consider doing that uh, to support Blue Water Health at this time. We thought we could play a role in just making um, some activities for families and kids, maybe be a distraction to the stress that they're feeling. The big decision for us was, do we completely uh, close the, the college down? And do we ask all our folks to move out of, resident, out of residence? The main point that uh, I want to stress is that people do have to be completely honest. You are not going to get any uh, less care. The medical officer of health has said repeatedly, these next two weeks are critical. We've done about 180 deliveries already. We've also raised $1,000 for our local food bank. People are so generous. Our run walk is slated for Father's Day, and we are already planning that it may be a virtual race. You know, the added uncertainty of what's, uh, what's happening in the home, uh, the loss of some of their, their friends uh, to this. We have youth that really rely on that, that interaction, so we're playing with ways to to do that. We really want to ensure that families work together. We've eliminated fares, uh, so we've not uh, collected fares for approximately a week and a half. I think what his idea on this was to reinforce again the importance of people to uh, take this for serious. New people calling in, new people who are concerned about, you know, I've, I've lost my job, I've been laid off, because this is just so, so widespread. You know, we went through a number of video calls with players and you know, like, we got a lot out of it. Seeing my name go through that origination is going to make me proud and can't wait to get, get it started. For those not infected yet, act as if your life depends on your actions, because it does. Uh, this particular individual refused to be quarantined, even though they have been quarantined for international travel. That endangers everybody. You cannot unilaterally stop a court order or complying with a separation agreement um, because of this virus. Everyone wants to play the show, but wants to do it in a safe manner when it is okay to do so. We'll get back to normal at some point, but just we're hoping everybody will have patience with us. Because we're, we're learning to do our businesses differently, um, maybe it's going to enhance services in the future. People start to congregate and don't know enough to stay apart from each other, then there's going to be uh, further regulations put down. You know, of course, our community couldn't do this, you know, without people like that, uh, all frontline workers. So it's a common sense decision. Will it be popular? I doubt it, the people that use it. But the reality is our greater job is to protect the public. We then take the, uh, the band, we put an elastic on the back of it, and then simply snap the, uh, the shield cover on. I put Ron in touch with, with Rick and, uh, they got their heads together and, and Rick was really instrumental in, in pulling this thing together. It doesn't look pretty right now, uh, but I, my belief is that it will come back. And if you're invested according to your time horizon and your risk tolerance, stay the course. There's no right way to feel right now. And I think when we take that pressure off of ourselves, it actually helps our mental wellness in so many different ways. The staff here in the village did an excellent job of closing off the waterfront. I mean, it was, to me personally, a really sad day. I think you have a lot of frustrated people and uh, obviously no one saw this coming. I think they might be another one of those unsung heroes that maybe, you know, uh, have slipped through the cracks. So if I can get it on the record now, uh, a shout out to uh, the telecommunications workers. All of the projects totaling approximately $1.8 million will be canceled for this year. Having this pandemic around us is adding a lot of extra pressure. The, the healthcare workers who are doing an incredible job 
but all those other people out there from bus drivers to cashiers who are putting themselves at risk. As the weather gets better and more and more people are out there, we don't want to undo all the good that's been done. I've been happy that the surge that we've been expecting hasn't been as bad, and that's actually uh, due to the uh, physical distancing and all the public health measures. As a Parks and Rec guy, I'm encouraging people to get out and be fit. It's just a matter of not uh, going into high contact areas. They just can't retool on the fly. And we have some massive problems in the beef industry here as well. There are so many um, important and remarkable charitable organizations in this community that are um, also uh, experiencing uh, the generosity right now of, of people really coming together. The industry itself, you know, it has um, taken a hit, but not in the same capacity, obviously, that, you know, traditional sports has. We're all in this together, right? And, and hopefully, I, I'm hoping that we, we are going to see a flattening of the curve. For the public and friends and family to kind of see, you know, how much thought really goes into a day of living with a chronic illness that doesn't go away. We're doing our best to just try and stay open for our commercial drivers. I mean, some of these guys have been customers for many, many years here. A number of these small businesses, we, if we don't help them, they won't be there, you know, uh, when this we finally do come out of this, and we will come out of this. Just look at the supermarkets, look at the liquor stores. There are setups now that are protecting people, everything from the barriers to how people can line up. We weren't uh, using near the uh, personal protective equipment that we are now. People, like you said, may not get called back to work. We don't know if some businesses may close or how long it will take to ramp up again. We've changed things to reach out over the phone or via Zoom or virtual uh, space at this point in time. Online uh, seminars and webinars. Um, so it's, it's adapting the way they do business. Everybody is helping everybody. We've had some good news stories, as you know. Right off the bat, it was jigsaw puzzles and workbooks for kids. And we are stocked up to the eyeballs with workbooks. They went and they looked at a number of businesses they thought because of the flattening of the curve they could start to slowly give people hope. Breathing in that fresh air, saying hello to neighbors or people who are walking by, it, it does make a large difference for people right now. The official ceremony is canceled, but you can do your own candidate in any way, shape, or form you can, as long as you respect the rules. Yeah, come September, my role will be, I'll be focusing on the general manager job with Sarni Sting and supporting the team as much as I can. They loved the shows that they were participating in. They were gravely sad, understandably, and can't wait to join us in 2021. We give them, hey, this is what it's worth. Uh, here's a repair list and recommendations we should do. So when, you know, things do normalize and you're ready to go on the market, you're ready to rock and roll. Of course, they're working outdoors, they're uh, practicing social distancing, uh, so it's good that we can open more of it. There will be tips and tricks sent out to all of our registrants as well um, as sharing on our social media on how to prepare for Relay at Home. Now I want you to help this student feel connected. We want to check in on their well-being. We want to make sure that we're responding. We've been able to transition to online programming very quickly. Um, we don't have our great volunteers coming in, but we do have them sending some videos, etc. Ready to do their part, ready to go whenever they get the, you know, the go-ahead sign. We all miss being together and we look forward to the day that we can be back face-to-face. -face. Pre-COVID, we had about 30 people in shelter. We now have, uh, it was 65 people last night in our care. I think the public health interventions that people have been taking over the last few weeks have, have been working. Certainly we've seen a flattening of the curve. Uh, having enough money for bills, rent, mortgage payments, as well as putting food on the table. What's going to happen in June and July and August and the fall when we start to see the defaults? Now is the time to really take a, a hard look at your business from a strategic standpoint. Now walk-ins not, it's virtual, right? So people are calling in. So we're getting there. We're getting back up to where we were. So people have tried to cope um, and waited um, to, to reach out to us. One thing that is not stopping and that is the number of animals that continue to come into our shelter. Prepared to present that healthy uh, and safe environment with the alterations to uh, golf to uphold social distancing. Hope people are, you know, as they have been, socially responsible, wear their masks uh, where they feel they need to, and if, especially if they're going out. We started to um, isolate residents uh, at any immediate onset of a symptom. 
just because we're apart physically doesn't mean that we don't have that same strong communication. We don't really see it as ever having actually been closed because uh, we're still seeing maybe 1,500 to 2,000 trucks a day. That's a key value that our donors have. Uh, that they want to make sure that those most in need are getting the help. Umbrella of responsibility to ensure that these veterans aren't lost or forgotten during um, the pandemic. So I couldn't think of anything better to do than make masks and help out with the talent that I know I have. I don't know whether shopping and merchandising will be the same when this is over. A day like today just brings so much joy and enlightens everybody in um, the crazy times that we're going through right now. It's important that we continue to do things to keep the city moving. At the same time, we're trying to deal with what are some very serious economic and social issues out there. A good number of our, uh, our businesses, our community organizations, they will weather this. If you're feeling that you want to test, please call the assessment centers to make a scheduled appointment. COVID-19 has strained an already under-resourced, undervalued, and over-regulated sector. Wherever possible, we want children to stay home. The safest place for them is home in their own family bubble. You know, masks and gloves, and that we were observing that six foot distancing. So um, our employees were, were right on board to do that. We had work physically hanging in the gallery. So there were a lot of contracts we had to negotiate. We've moved those nine, uh, nine residents of uh, Vision to Blue Water Health. As the economy starts to decline, we're the first victims, if you will, contract workers. But we're moving into a place where we now have to start considering how do we live with this risk as part of our lives. What's a nice staycation, as it's, it's called kind of in our tourism industry, is where you can stay local. But the learning's continuing. We're continuing with our, our process, continuing uh, with those key concepts. All members that are, uh, you know, elected, they're, they're elected to be here and to speak and to vote, and that's what we're going to do. So I think there's a chance for us to experiment, uh, do some creative things, and work with the private sector to help them get through this crisis. We want them to know that there's extra help around and there's people in the community that genuinely care. Whatever proceeds come out of the song have to go towards uh, charity, preferably something that will assist uh, frontline workers. COVID may have, may have slowed things down, but uh, cancer is still out there. The new language of th this COVID period was we've got to pivot our business model. There's a lot of folks stepping up to do some really great work online and making the best of, of what's going on right now. And I got great confidence in the small business community and that will, you know, as much of a struggle as it is, they're going to be able to come out of this. What I try to do on my social media, yes, there's a lot of serious stuff and there's a lot of stuff people debate, but there's also things that to make people smile. It's just really been a great showing of community coming together. Truthfully, this COVID thing has really probably, uh, a lot of people have reinvented themselves. I know that uh, the patrons missed us. I know that the staff certainly missed the library patrons and that people were excited to get back into the workplace. But it was a milestone. It was a milestone and we've had, uh, since Monday, we have had no COVID positive uh, patients in hospital. And I know there's people that want to get to phase three, but we gotta just, you know, be careful and uh, slow and steady wins the race as the old saying goes. Stay tuned, more to come after this. Welcome back. In the last segment, we showed you a summary of the past 13 weeks of Sarnia Lampton Daily for a reason. With us moving now to stage two and things slowly getting back to a new normal, we are going to take a step back from this show. But we're not going anywhere. Your TV will continue to bring you updates on our Facebook and Twitter channels, and the engagement and traffic there has gone up huge since the pandemic began. We're very proud to bring you all of those updates and certainly engage with the community as what has gone on during COVID-19 has certainly been very busy for everyone. We'll also continue to bring you local happenings here on your TV, including this Monday Sarnia City Council meeting. And on Canada Day, we'll bring you an encore presentation of the 2019 Sarnia Canada Day Parade. But for now, I'm Terry Doyle. Thank you so much for joining us here on Sarnia Lampton Daily.